the people that they feature in those uh, are people that are on the fringe of Mormonism. Uh, they're not the typical Mormon. Just tell me about when you go to the temple, there's an oath, apparently, something like this. I'm a little uncomfortable with doing it, not uh, because of the people at the table there. Uh, oh. They might be LDS, but... Um, Should we um, move away? I can see you. Even for someone as bold as Jeff, there is still a stigma attached to being an ex-Mormon in Utah and fear. In the temple, you learn secret handshakes uh, and you go through various motions. And one of those that became controversial and they, they did away with it uh, was this motion of slitting your throat. And when you do that, you say, I will suffer my life to be taken. And then you do it, you kind of, there's another one where you slit your bowels open with, uh, by doing the same sort of emotion. That was done away with too. Would Mitt Romney have sworn the oath? Oh yeah. All adult Mormons would have sworn the oath until it was abandoned in 1990, and that includes Mitt Romney. That raises questions if they've got a hold on the man who may end up in the White House. Let's talk about Mitt Romney. Okay. The man who may well become the most powerful man on earth. Mm -hmm. As a Mormon in the temple, I've been told, he would have sworn an oath to say that he would not pass on what happens in the temple, lest he slit his throat. Is that true? That's not true. That's not true. We do not have penalties in the temple. You used to? We used to. Therefore, he swore an oath saying, I will not tell anyone about the secrets here, lest I slip my throat. Well, the, the, the vow that was made was regarding the ordinance, the ordinance of the temple. It sounds Masonic, sir. It sounds Masonic. Well, it's, comparable. Uh, it's similar to, to, to a, a Masonic uh, relationship. The most, potentially, the most powerful man in the world has sworn an oath which he meant at the time, whatever it is now, that he must not tell anyone about what he's seen, lest he slip his That he would not tell anyone about his personal pledge to the Lord. I'm assuming that any religious candidate, an evangelical, a Roman Catholic, Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, uh, Osama, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, President Obama, uh, I'm assuming that anybody who has a relationship to God, has made a pledge of some kind to God, There's, there, there'd be some kind of loyalty to God, or what kind of a God is that? Mitt Romney seems to recognize that the American public harbors suspicions about Mormonism, in part because of its secrecy. On the stump, he avoids the M word. Instead, he talks generically about his faith. The country was founded on this principle, and in the Constitution it says no religious test for office. And this is something that Mitt Romney says often when he's asked about his own faith. Certainly he's conscious of the political environment, and he's seen the same polls you have that show that there are skeptics uh, out there in the general population about his faith. Romney speaks about his dedication to Jesus, but leaves it at that. The issue is not what Mormons believe in. In the 21st century, you can believe that Jesus walked on water. You can believe in space aliens. You can believe in nothing. It's your right. What I want to find out is what happens if you're a Mormon and you stop believing and decide to leave the church. What's happening here today? Paul Stratton was, he says, disowned by his parents after leaving Mormonism. He took me to a group, they call themselves post-Mormons, where they too help each other adjust to life outside the church. In time, they will take away uh, your relationship with your family, they'll take away um, your status in your community and your family. I mean, for some people, it could even affect their jobs. And for a, a community that teaches uh, forgiveness and compassion and...